you guys. Um, I mentioned in my last video that I would be sharing my own story um, in the ways that I straddle the fence and how I came to realizing that that's what I was doing, that I did not live my life in complete um, that I wasn't completely in line with God and also um, why I feel like until just before I even met my husband um, that I was not really loving God with all of my heart, mind, body, and soul as the Bible tells us to do. And many of you probably can relate to this and I'm sure many can relate to the story because it's become almost as an epidemic and I've come to find that even some Christians make excuses to why it's okay for them to uh, live with this lifestyle or do this and while they are the exception uh, to the rule that you know God doesn't really want us you know living with people that we are not married to and when I became a Christian I was 16 years old had uh, Become, I got baptized when I was 17 because uh, my birthday fell at, you know, just shortly. In, I mean, just right in between. It wasn't very long in between. Um, but, anyways, the point is, even after I got saved, I was sincere and about, I was very sincere about my decision. But as time went on, I found that I didn't understand. Um, what it really meant to love God with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. Because anytime temptations came along, um, or, you know, my situation with things at home, you know, the, the abuse that went on in the home didn't change either. And a lot of times, you know, our situation doesn't change, not because God isn't really with us, but because other people are involved, and we got to realize that there's free will. If he took away the free will of some people, he'd have to take it away from all of us. And he doesn't want us to be robots, you know, just, you know, worshiping him because, we're, you know, we're being like robots. He wants us to do it of our own free will because we want to. And it's a learning process with us when we, the first step is admitting that we're sinners and that we need Jesus Christ. But after that, it becomes like a learning process of how to, to know God more and become closer. Our relationship with God becomes closer through the things that we go through, the trials that we go through, the difficulties that we go through, and the mistakes that we make. And that's why it's important also to repent daily of the things that we've done. And I found myself where there's at least two times that I was living with guys that I was not married to. And it was, it proved to be my downfall because the first time, we had uh, common acquaintances, common friends, you know, we knew all the same people, and would have parties at the house, and, you know, things like that, and I went to church regularly, and I still, you know, felt that tug in my heart, I still believed in Jesus Christ, that had never left me, but when I was, went home after church, I was still living with a guy. I was still having sex with a guy when I wasn't married to him. And I ended up finding myself with my heart broken. And granted, this guy was kind of using me, as it turned out, because he wasn't working. I was. I ended up, I was supporting the both of us. And in the end, he still had feelings for my best friend, his ex-girlfriend. And he at least was honest enough with me to tell me, you know, hey, look, I can't 
stay with you when I still have feelings for her. And it was hard, but, you know, you can't just assume, well, well, it's different for me because this, we really love each other and, you know, no, it's still a sin. And God considers it a sin because we're not, we're not in that, we're not in that bond of marriage. And he's trying to protect us from getting hurt. Because I had a long, I have a long history of bad relationships. And looking to guys to fulfill what I, where I was lacking. Where I felt empty. Like, you know, there was something missing and I was trying to fill it. Thinking guys were going to gonna fill that, that empty space that I had in my heart. And needing love and needing acceptance and so I fell for every guy that gave me the littlest bit of attention and made me feel good about myself for even a little while and it was just easier to believe that we were going to be together forever so why not live together and I fell into to relationship number two living with the guy because of that when his friend um, had broke up with me for our best friend he still had feelings for we were having one of those parties like I said and feeling sorry for myself and everything else well this the next relationship fell in because he started giving me the attention that I needed. He felt sorry for me. He, in a way, was there for me when I needed him. And eventually we ended up, he moved in with us. Now, his friend was still living there with me, but we were not in a relationship. We were not, you know, involved in having sex or anything like that. So I ended up living with two guys. <laughs> um... But the one guy that I was in, and actually became in a relationship with in the second time, um, we had a lot of problems with uh, the landlord, as it turned out. We got kicked out, and then I had to go live with his mother and them for a while. And just really, we weren't on our own two feet anymore. And then we ended up. renting a place together that we barely could even afford by ourselves. I mean, I was still, I was working, he was working, um, but in the end, we couldn't continue paying for the place. There was a lot of drama going on, and um, we had to have roommates, and there, the drama was because of the roommates. I mean, there was just problem after problem after problem. And I have to say that it was the result. I mean, there was other things involved and everything, but it was a result. My problems that I had were a result of the fact that I had not given my everything to God and my relationship to God. I was wishy-washy with Him. And though I went to church, it wasn't enough. It was about my relationship with God. It wasn't 100% like it ought to have been. And I found, my, I found myself not being able to handle the situations that I needed to because I wasn't allowing God to help me. I was trying to do it on my own. And so when we don't feel God's presence, we have to look at ourselves. We have to look at the decisions that we're making. Are we really giving everything to God? Or do we only think we are? Is there something else in our life that we're that we haven't given over to God? Is it our relationships with uh, our friends, with men and women? Is there anything else? Because later, after I got away,